All right, hello, my name is Vincent Moore, and today I went to Kilton Public Library in West Lebanon, New Hampshire, to interview librarian Sean Fleming and Chuck McAndrew, who've made their library the first library in the United States to host a tour exit relay as part of a collaboration with the Library Freedom Project. Now, before I get into this, I'd like to explain what is TOR. TOR, spelled T-O-R, stands for The Onion Router, is a browser that bounces its users' web traffic through different relays across the world, effectively making them anonymous to anyone who'd want to track them. Kilton Public Library sponsored one of the relays to anonymize their users' traffic. Now, when the Department of Homeland Security found out that Kilton was planning on hosting one of the relays, it quickly sent a message notifying local law enforcement on the ways criminals could abuse that anonymous browser. Then local law enforcement contacted Kilton Public Library and city officials did as well to urge them to shut down the relay, which Kilton Public Library did until its Board of Trustees meeting September 17th when it could decide whether or not it wants to keep the relay open. You can find the original story on ProPublica.org, but I wanted the story straight from the source. So I want to go to talk to Sean and Chuck and get their thoughts on this whole controversy. What made you first hear about the Library Freedom Project? I defer to you on that. Um, the, Allison uh, wrote an article for uh, Boing Boing, and uh, I, I read it, so I was interested. So I contacted her, and we actually set up a training for her to come up. Um, we had an event in Hooksit uh, with the uh, New Hampshire Library Association IT section, and that was the first time I met her. So. Oh, um. And um, have before you uh, before you read the article and heard about that, have either of you heard of or used Tor beforehand? Yeah, I, I have. I, I've um, been familiar with Tor for five or six years now. So and that would be no on my part. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, if you don't mind me asking, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Um, for what what like what purposes would you use Tor for? Uh, general web browsing, actually. I just, um, Tor is a great way to keep uh, large corporations which don't have the checks and balances that the government might have even from um, surveilling your web browsing. Um, if, I, if I'm looking for a Christmas gift for my wife, I don't want ads for that Christmas gift popping up the next time she opens the web browser. So, uh, Tor it doesn't need to be, I mean, it's great, it provides all these protections again for human rights activists and vulnerable populations, but uh, everyday citizens it provides um, benefits for as well. And uh, do you ever worry about whoever's controlling the, um, I, I, I'm not sure of a technical, the exit node, like someone could look at your traffic through that? Yeah, uh, Tor in and of itself is not um, a solution for online anonymity. It's a tool that helps with it, but uh, you need to uh, have other aspects to Tor just uh, um, prevents the person at the end from knowing who the person at the start is, but it doesn't encrypt the traffic by itself. So uh, other technology like HTTPS, um, SSL, uh, is end-to-end -end encryption. So there, there's actually um, browser plugins like HTTPS Everywhere that can ensure that if an SSL connection is available, you use it, and that, um, that provides, in conjunction with tools like Tor, provides better uh, privacy. And um, so this, this question is from the station. Uh, why? Why volunteer first? Like why why uh, you know Kilton Library in Lebanon, New Hampshire? Why why did you guys decide to uh, be the first to um, try out this project? I've been asking myself that question. A lot <laughs> <lately too>. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so first of all, I would like to say maybe this isn't the most important reason why, but um, well, perhaps it is though. It's so as the library director, I think it's important for me to work with the staff and to have them be engaged in the work that they're doing. And so one of the things that, um, that Chuck has done is he's put us on Linux, so we're running all Linux computers. Uh, I thought it was, uh, it meshed with what we wanted to do as far as making our computers more stable, more up to date. Um, we also have Chromebooks, that was a perfect solution for our patron internet because we'd had a lot of problems with people. We had time on software prior to Chuck being hired. Things, the software would 
shut down the computers on people who were working on their on their say a resume or a paper. We just were in a bad state really with the with the computers um, here in general. And when Chuck got excited about this project, it sounded like a reasonable project to me. We already provide internet to people within the walls of the library here, and people use the internet for bad purposes here. You know, aside from Tor, you know, we had somebody recently who did something that got him taken outside by the police and probably arrested because you know, he was doing something illegal with the computers. Nobody would say, oh, you need to shut your computers down. You're not down because that one person did something bad, or even if you had a number of people do something bad with the computers. So that was the case we made, one of the cases we made when we approached the trustees about Tor. And um, so frankly, I thought, we, we, I did focus probably more so on the positives than the possible negatives. And maybe I'm feeling a little justified about having done so, given the fact that you know after we turned off the relay, the bulk of the, the uh, response has been, you ought to turn that back on. So um, maybe it's not as controversial a thing to have engaged in as I... Uh, maybe a few days ago, thought when you know in the wake of City Hall talking to us in the police department. So, um, yeah, it was, and it was an exciting thing to to be part of. You know, you're the first library out there, but there were other libraries waiting in the wings. So that sort of confirmed the fact that you know this would be a worthwhile project to engage in. And also, um, the libraries have been interested in privacy and intellectual freedom for a long time. It seemed to mesh pretty well with this project. Um, so those are the reasons and why. And we're in a really good position to do it, too. Um, we, uh, I um, had the professional relationship with um, Allison Macrina from the Library Freedom Project. We'd hosted her in Hooksit, and then we hosted her again here at Kilton. Uh, when she was here, she saw the stuff we had done like running open source software on our uh, internet implementing a lot of privacy solutions like HTTPS Everywhere, which I was talking about earlier, Adblock Plus, Privacy Badger, are all uh, installed by default on our patron desktop computers. Um, when people log out, everything they do is wiped. Um, Chrome, for example, runs in incognito mode by default on our computers. So she saw that we were interested in privacy and instituting a lot of measures to protect privacy, uh, patient privacy already. And she saw that since we had switched over completely to open source, we had a certain amount of technical skill in-house. So uh, she thought that we would be a good uh, candidate. So when she approached me with it and I spoke to uh, Sean and our board, and our board, uh, who approved it unanimously, and my director, they're very supportive of being forward-looking. They don't want to stay still. You know, we, uh, libraries are, in my opinion, more relevant than ever because we're in the information age and we are information professionals. Um, and here's a, here's a way to publicly demonstrate our relevance and show people how we are impacting their lives. And I thought that um, it, we're a small enough library that I can talk directly to our director, I can talk directly to our board, but we're a large enough library that we have the resources to engage in a project like this. We aren't like some of the really tiny libraries that only have one person working yeah. there. Yeah. Or are so large that they have a number of layers of administration and an and a effort to engage in a project like this might take a long time because you'd have a number of committees to go through. and. Um, it, we have also a number of uh, librarians on our board of trustees, so having that well-informed group of individuals that you can talk to about these issues, I mean, there's there's a certain understanding of the underlying principles that's there during our board meetings when you talk to the, our librarians and also the other members of the board of trustees because they've been there for a long time and are engaged with what we're doing. That was also a, it encouraged us to proceed with this. Um, and then there's just the geographic location. I know if you're growing up here in, uh, in the Upper Valley, you might feel like you're in the periphery and away from everything, but we're really not that far from Boston. It's not far for Allison to come up here. If we were in South Dakota, you know, we probably would not be one of the first libraries engaged in this, but we're just close enough that Chuck, the work that Chuck's doing and um, our, our availability and willingness to do this made it possible. And, and frankly, with the technology today, there's no reason that even a relative, on the national stage, a relatively small library can't make a national impact. And I saw no reason that our library shouldn't be a national leader in this. Yeah.
<laughs> so a lot of a lot of actually questions were um, were asked for you, um, and uh, sorry, I'm just trying to, um, scrolling through. Yeah, you you guys, I gave a lot of great information, answered a lot, <laughs> of um, and. Uh, would you mind describing your initial reaction to the um, Department of Homeland Security involvement in all of this and just, I guess, your experience with uh, law enforcement in general in regarding to this, um, I, I guess I'd say, controversy? Yeah. So when Department of Homeland Security got in touch, and I believe it was with Portsmouth Police, and then they got in touch with Lebanon Police um, from the email trail that I've seen, it's been, the comments were fairly innocuous. Uh, so I've seen a lot of language about, um, a lot of language that is sort of inflammatory about the police department. Really, the meeting that we had with the, with, um, the city manager's office and with the police was informative rather than, we didn't feel like we were being bullied, we didn't feel like we were being forced to turn this off. It was, um, you know, it was a decision made by myself and Fran to put a temporary halt to this, so, um, but it was kind of interesting to, to be under the uh, spotlight from a federal agency. I just uh, never anticipated that kind of thing happening as a public librarian in a fairly small community in New Hampshire. So, um, we, we understand that law enforcement has their perspective. Yeah. They engage with criminals every day. You know, it makes sense that they would tend to see the criminal element. Mm -hmm. um, as librarians, we have a different perspective. We're concerned about intellectual freedom and privacy and the freedom to read. Um, so when law enforcement approached us on this, we understood where they were coming from, you know. Um, but we're coming from a different place. It, the vast majority of people out there are good people and they're law-abiding people. And um, in my view, we shouldn't, we shouldn't you know, base all our policies on the lowest of the low, you know. Um, but when you see that every day and that's all you see, it gives you a certain perspective. And that doesn't mean that we're being bullied by them, you know, and they, they when they approached us, they said they, they wanted to make us aware of their experiences and what had gone on. And I mean, we were already aware of a lot of the negatives of uh, TOR, uh, even if we hadn't, uh, we didn't necessarily anticipate the degree to which they would object to it. But, um, so some of the analogies that have been used, though, by people, in, um, especially in comments, say, uh, based on the ProPublica article, or, um, have really drawn, uh, they've tried to draw an analogy between tour and, say, you know, public parks or your vehicle or your house. I don't know that they're all apt analogies, really, because tour is a very effective tool for, for criminals. Silk Road, ran on tour, you know, other people are doing um, nefarious things, they run on tour. So I can see their point of view. It is an effective tool for, for criminals. But, there and there are restrictions on things like guns and other tools that criminals can use. And there are reasons for that. However, there is on the other side of the ledger the intellectual freedom issues, privacy, confidentiality, those are things, populations. vulnerable populations, these are things that our Board of Trustees, are issues you're going to have to take a look at and see where, how does this all shake out and what's the balance here. And one of the problems with TOR is you don't really know to what purposes it's being put because besides the anecdotal evidence, you know, things that you've heard from friends and, you know, people who have used it that you know of um, to stay safe or the other good purposes to which have been placed. It's such, it's a, it's, um, it's not something where you can tell, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't open, there's no way to open up the lid on that box and see what's going on. So you just have to make assumptions that I guess it's being used for more good purposes than negative. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a very good way to look at it. <laughs> um, I guess this is a re relatively short answer. Do you, uh, do either of you believe in the allegations of mass NSA spying? Um, I believe that uh, certain uh, <clears throat> revelations that have been made confirm certain NSA uh, programs like the mass collection of phone metadata, you know, that, that definitely 
is the case, and it definitely is the case that uh, technologies like Tor were mentioned in some of the Snowden documents. Um, so I, I mean, anytime you start talking about stuff like this, um, you always have your, <laughs> your your fringe elements that really think. I mean, I, I've seen plenty of comments online where it says. Oh, you know, uh, public libraries hosting tour. Sure, that gives them a centralized place for the NSA to look. Or they're all in the NSA's oh. pocket already. They work for the government. What do you expect? You know, <laughs> um, which just is pretty amusing to me. Um, so I, I mean, I, I was in the Marine Corps. I held a secret clearance. Um, I've seen a lot of the, at least the military side of the Intel game and there's a lot of data collected and you know there's probably a lot more collected than they can even go through right now but uh, which is problematic in its own right because it allows uh, the term is retroactive surveillance which you know is pretty scary uh, but uh, that being said ultimately the US government is responsible to the taxpayers to the citizens of the country and um, when we become aware of programs like this uh, if the populace, once it's shut down, it, it eventually will be shut down. We just have to make our will known. Yeah, the government has to be accountable to the people. I think part of the, uh, so much of the, the thread that's running through a lot of these comments is the, the fact that people feel so divorced from their government, from the federal government. I think that's really unfortunate because the federal government is there it's, it's supposed to represent us. It should <laughs> serve the will of the should, people. Yeah, it should serve the people. And, it's, and things like the NSA programs are making people feel even more removed and less trustful of their government. And others are a uh, rich vein of history there in the United States. I mean, that's the reason why we grew off the shackles of the British Empire. But it, uh, these people are, we do have elected representatives. You know, there is accountability there to some extent, even with the, um, you know, the large infrastructure that's beyond, there beyond what our elected representatives are. So I, I guess I just wish that people tr put a little more trust in their government. But I suppose when you have allegations like if we made about the NSA, and a lot of them actually confirmed by people right. under oath, they can understand why people would not trust, not trust their and it does serve not just federal officials. to illustrate some of the importance of stuff like TOR even in our own country uh, right. because without TOR the Snowden revelations would never have happened and these programs would be going on completely in the dark, you know. Because light has been shown on them, then we can have a conversation and decide if they're appropriate or not, which I think is important that citizens are able to have that conversation. Oh, very elegantly stated, and I guess, uh, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, very, uh, very, um, and, um, I guess, um, very, it's all, it's all over the place there, <laughs> and what, um, if, what are your, uh, what are your plans if, say, tomorrow, the Board of Trustees votes down the, they vote to um, to to get rid of a relay. What what are what are your plans afterwards? Are you going to continue with projects like this, or are you just going to? Um, what are your plans for it? Or not to just immediately submit my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not resigning over tour, but um, well, I think there are other ways for us to pursue. Um, making things as, as confidential and private for people within the walls of the library. Um, I'm sure Chuck is going to find plenty of programs to do as far as helping people to um, acquire computer skills in, in our libraries as well. I um, haven't really thought about what we'll do. I, mean, there, I don't know that there are really much in, there's much in the way of alternative programs well, to tour. No, uh, maybe you've thought about uh, this a bit more than I have. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we will continue to uh, 
try to protect our patrons' privacy in every way possible through uh, both our own IT infrastructure and also through education programs. There's a lot of stuff you can do that is in no way, shape, or form controversial. Um, we have in the works right now a program called Online Self-Defense, which um, it's going to be a series of classes that you can take starting at White Belt, the most basic. And, you know, it teaches you things like how to set a strong password, how to do updates and install antivirus and stuff like that, and it goes all the way up to uh, the most paranoid person out there would probably be happy with it. Um, it's still in the planning stages, but we're about ready. Uh, we've got the lesson plan done for the first uh, class, so we're, we're going to start running those soon. Uh, we're going to continue to upgrade our infrastructure to do everything we can to protect people's privacy, and we're going to try and educate people and uh, not just our own patrons, but other librarians also are going to talk to them. We've shared this um, syllabus for the online self-defense with uh, other librarians in the Upper Valley. Um, and anything that we can do to talk about our experience with the TOR project, uh, we definitely want to help other librarians and other libraries. Yeah. Um, Allison McCready has said no matter what happens, you know, if it's voted up or down, this has been informative for her. And I'm sure she's going to pursue this project you know, with other public libraries. And we've had communications with other libraries that are interested in pursuing this in, in their locations. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and anything that our experience can contribute to them doing the things for the good. So whether we vote yes or no, it's still a win-win for uh, the people, I guess. Right. For the Library Freedom Project, yeah. yeah. I'm really? sure they would rather see <laughs> us succeed because yeah. I think that would then lead other public libraries to to go to partner with, with them as well. Um, so that would be their benefit. But it's definitely, they, they, like us, were not really expecting this kind of controversy. They weren't expecting City Hall and the Police Department to call us and, and uh, raise Regar the kind of concerns that they did. Regardless what happens with the board meeting, though, we're having a good conversation now about the role of privacy and the role of public libraries in privacy and intellectual freedom and that's all to the good and um, knowing getting the input from our community but also getting the community from or getting the input from the nation and even internationally we've got emails from all over the world on, on this subject um, is really good for us to know uh, where people stand on this issue and um, we knew that privacy was important to a certain subset of the population, but we've all actually been surprised at the overwhelming outpouring of support for this and how important it is to people um, and hearing stories like um, we we're hearing from people about ways in, the, in which this impacted them personally. It's pretty neat. Fran Oskadal, the, the um, chair of the Board of Trustees, he was the one who was here when you were when, uh, you know, when you entered the room, and we discussed his impressions from his friends and neighbors and said that he's been surprised by the number of people who have been really pretty vocal in their support for this when he's talked to them about it, you know, in the last few days. So I don't know if we really have to think too much about what would happen if it gets turned off. If, if this were put to a vote, you know, based on the number of comments we've received so far, I mean, it would be, wouldn't even be close. It would be, you know, 75 to 1, right, as far as um, yep. keeping the tour node or put it, turning it back on. Yep. So, yeah, it seems like it's running pretty strongly in that direction. So I don't, I don't know if that will even be something we have to contemplate. But it could, it could be at the trustees' meeting tomorrow night that we have a different crowd. I don't know um, if that will be the case or not. Sorry. No, I, I, I do not want to speculate because a week ago I would have thought that it would be would have broken down differently. I would have thought <laughs> two-thirds maybe pro-TOR, a third who were not in favor of TOR, and that's not the way it's no. played out. It's more like 98%. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. That's, um, well, that's excellent for, um, yeah, for, for a project in your interests. And uh, is there anything either of you would like to say um, to uh, f say to the viewing public to finish this interview up? You can go first, Jack. <laughs> Intellectual freedom and privacy are important to our society. Um, 
Carnegie, Andrew Carnegie, who built the Lebanon Library, called public libraries the most democratic of institutions because anyone could go in and in, uh, educate themselves in them, regardless of who they were or what information they wanted to look up. Um, today, most information is not housed in libraries, it's housed online. Uh, public libraries have a real interest in promoting open access to information to the general public, um, even in online and digital forms. And what we're trying to do here is just an extension of that. We're trying to ensure that patrons, but not just our direct patrons, but citizens all over the world, have open access to information. And we already do that. Too, you know, if, if somebody walks in the door, we don't card them when they want to use the patron internet computer. So we're we are providing access to information to people from Australia and Europe and all over all over the world, really. So I was actually asked about an hour or two ago by a Boston Globe reporter, "Why are you doing this for um, what will really be a project that's not going to maybe have a direct impact on your residents, you know, residents of the city of Lebanon?" But we already have, we're already in an age where we're doing that. And um, so extending, extending intellectual freedom um, and privacy to people around the world just seems like a natural fit. Well, very good. Very, uh, thank you very much for uh, meeting with me today. And I um, hope uh, you, um, you're both successful in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. I'll post an update video when I get to details of a meeting sometime on Wednesday. And we'll see whether or not the people in the city of Lebanon decided to vote for privacy in their internet browsing or if they decided to vote for the uh, prevention of supposed criminal abuse of their library. Now I want to thank Sean and Chuck and the staff of Kilton Library for being so helpful getting this interview out and helping me out with this. And if you liked this video, please drop a like. And if you want to see more... Um, Videos like this showing local, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, in general New England events like this. Uh, please subscribe or leave a comment and um, let me know. And thanks for watching.